Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Indie Release Dispatch from Pixels of Breakfast. I'm your host, Steve. This is November 3rd, 2023, and we're just going to dive straight into it and have a look at some cool indie games that came across our desk this week. And the first one off the rank is Alien Hominid HD. So when you're talking about the classic era of the indie gaming renaissance, you can't get much more successful than the behemoth. And while Castle Crashers may have been their first mainstream hit via Xbox Live Arcade, Alien Hominid was the first released from this small team back in 2004 on the PlayStation 2. And now here it is again on Steam, bringing the award-winning 2D side-scroller back some 16 years later with improved visuals, online monthly leaderboards, and Steam achievements. I suspect if you remember this game from your youth, you'd probably be pretty excited by this. But if, like me, you missed this somehow back in the day, it could be a good opportunity to go back and see the beginnings of this foundational studio for the wave of indies that brought unique ideas to console gamers for the first time. And the next one that really caught my attention is This Bed We Made. It's by Low Birth Games, has a very positive rating on Steam. I think I mentioned this in the first episode, maybe the second of the Indie Release Dispatch, but I really love a good mystery. And that is why This Bed We Made by Low Birth Games immediately jumped out at me when I spotted it on Steam. It's set in the late 50s and you play as Sophie, a chambermaid in the Clarington Hotel who stumbles upon a story of glamour and murder as you go about the daily routine. And you'll be exploring the private lives of the hotel guests, and each action you make will have an impact on how the story unfolds. It's a pretty short game, apparently running only four to six hours for a typical playthrough, but it has this air of intrigue that really has me interested. And probably the biggest one on this list this week is Thirsty Suitors. It's by Outer Loop Games, and there's currently no Steam rating. It just dropped today. But this one's been long touted, and I think people are pretty excited for it. So if Tony Hawk, Persona, and Venba got thrown into a blender, out comes this long-awaited Thirsty Suitors from Outer Loop Games. It's a deliciously colourful adventure that explores culture and relationships and family pressures and how to express yourself when facing all of those factors. And you play as Jala, who needs to sort things out with their exes and repair broken relationships in time for her sister's wedding. And all of this takes place via over-the-top turn-based battles that unfold as you traverse the world of Barefoot Park via some sick skateboarding sections. And to top it all off, you get to repair those relationships with action-packed cooking segments while exploring South Asian-inspired dishes. Seems to be a lot going on here, but everything I've seen from Thirsty Suitors so far seems wonderful, and I'm very excited to check it out today. Okay, this next game is called Sands of Aura. It's by Chashu Entertainment. It has a mostly positive rating on Steam. And this one came under my radar thanks to Rock Paper Shotgun's headline, Sands of Aura Out Today. It's a Souls-like RPG with Wind Waker-style open world sailing. I like Souls-likes. I like Wind Waker. And now after checking out the Steam page for Sands of Aura, I think I might like this too. A pesky cataclysm has unleashed permanent night time on the land of Talamal, and as a brand new remnant knight, you are sailing across the seas of sand in a grain wake, a fancy sand boat. Uh, It has an open world that awaits you filled with combat and lore, and the art style just honestly seems pretty fantastic. I've never heard of this game, but it was in early access for some time, and it seems that this version 1.0 release is creating some buzz. Again, the next one's sort of in the same vein. It's called Lunacid. It's by Kira LLC and has a very positive rating on Steam. And before Dark Souls, From Software were known for their gritty dungeon crawlers like Shadow Tower and Kingsfield, and that is what Lunacid is cribbing from, releasing a retro first-person dungeon crawler that sees you thrown into a great well for crimes unknown. The only way to get out is to go deeper into the abyss and confronting the sleeping old one at the bottom. This is filled with vicious enemies and many secrets, and Lunacid actually looks like a pretty great game that has a strong following thanks to early access, and it's seeing a 1.0 release this week. And the last game on our list is Fish Game. It's by A Shell in the Pit Games and Creative Ink Games. It has very positive rating on Steam. And I guess, do you like fish? Do you sit at home late at night just wishing you had a temperature controlled tank filled with the most colorful tropical swimmy pals to keep you company? Well, then I present to you Fish Game, a highly sophisticated Props to the marketing team on that one. Aquarium simulator that will have you crafting tanks, caring for your fish, and dealing with their various needs and personalities. I know that fishing in games has become such a huge feature, but Fish Game looks to explore the nature of why we like fish in general, and that's kind of cool. Good vibes from this one. And that's a wrap on the Indie Release Dispatch. A lot of great games this week, so let's just finish up with what's been going on here at Pixels for Breakfast. And to be honest, not much, uh, but I did release a tabletop simulator mod. So I had a mission to take the fancy new board game, Pagan Fate of Renoke, that I got from a Kickstarter pledge, and I wanted to play it with my cohort, Blue. Problem is, I live in Japan. Blue does not live in Japan. What a conundrum. So after playing over 100 hours of tabletop sim over the years with friends, I took my first step towards making something for it. And I have no experience doing scripting and I've never made a mod before. 
Uh, but I was really surprised just how easy it was. Like, it was pretty wild. I got the whole thing done in just a couple of days. And, you know, that was thanks to a lot of tutorials, but also just it seemed pretty intuitive. Uh, a lot of people have different ways of doing it, like using flatbed scanners or, you know, setting up a thing with a digital camera. And honestly, my Pixel 7 uh, phone with some good lighting and an overhead sort of... Uh, uh, camera mount that that did the trick so I scanned all the cards and I even learned how to make PNGs of like the boards and and uh, put them into a custom uh, token which meshes it out perfectly it was kind of crazy um, but something that's super interesting is just how quickly it kind of rocketed on uh, Steam Workshop um, as it stands the first two days of having the mod live there's a 72 percent adoption rate from anyone that sees it and they subscribe it and add to their collection. Now, they'll probably never play it, but they've got it. And that really surprised me. Like, I thought it would sit there and it would maybe get two or three views. And probably all of those would be the friends that I want to play the game with. But yeah, I guess uh, tabletop sim fans are just looking for, for new mods and games. And I, I just did this so Blue and I could play it. But now that people are, are getting it and, and wanting to play it too, like, I'm actually planning a few updates to add some scripts in there and scan in all the expansions and all that sort of good stuff. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's been a really interesting experience. So I might be writing something for the DLC segment of the website. So if that stuff kind of interests you, make sure you hit the subscribe button on pixelsofbreakfast.net because that DLC segment only goes to people who subscribe to the newsletter. But that's it for this week. Let me know what games have been grabbing your attention. What indie gems did we miss? Uh, if you like the show or you're reading this newsletter and you, you like what you read, please send this out to a friend. That's the only way that we sort of are building up those numbers. I uh, really appreciate the support so far. I've been Steve and I'll catch you next time.